Hey everybody, welcome, welcome. This is Dave's uh, podcast show, whatever. We're going to do a podcast right here. We're recording it. Plus, plus, I can't say it. Prosperity. And we're recording this to a lot of things. A lot of things. This is just my podcast. I'm recording this to YouTube. And uh, this is not live streamed. It's just a podcast. going to go up there. And if you guys want to listen to my podcast every single week, I'm going to... I put up a... A lot of videos, much as I can, much as my voice can tolerate. Um, and if I'm still alive, that is. Uh, I will put up more videos on YouTube. Uh, doesn't They don't limit you how many videos are on YouTube. They'll, they'll uh, whatever, uh, they'll let you have millions and millions of videos up there until, until eternity. It's like in the world, in eternity, or in the afterlife. That's what we're going to uh, t- uh, talk about here and really, really kind of um, do fact checking. Just like uh, CNN always says, we're going to do some fact checking about this. So we're going to do some afterlife. Um, we're going to talk about the spirits of the afterlife, the spirits of the afterlife. And we are spirits once we pass away. Once we pass away, we are spirits. So we, our body still is our body that we had in front of us goes underground, six feet underground, and our soul lives on, or our spirit lives on. And they live on for many, many years until somebody has a special device to call upon the spirits in the afterlife. Um, they may, may be good or bad or worse ever. And people say you, use, uh, you don't have to use Ouija boards to summon the spirits. Um, a lot of people have different ways of dealing with the Ouija board. Ouija board is essentially uh, open door or open and closed door. It's like to a house, but that that works in a ways of the Ouija board. You open up the uh, spirit box, you close it as a spirit box, and the Ouija board is just like that. It tells like this from the letters A to Z, one to uh, I mean one to ten. So, and they have the yes or no answers. That's what the Ouija board is all about. The why am I saying this is Ouija board is like an, it opens a, uh, opens a portal. Uh, they call it the portal. The Ouija board is just a portal to open up to the spirit world. Uh, that portal can be open or closed. It's like, it's like opening up the door in your house. Open and close. You, if you close it, nobody's going to come in. If you open it up, everybody's going to come in. So it's just the Ouija board, be that it's made, you know, as, as directed. So the Ouija board is just like an open door. Like if you open up your door to the house, that's kind of like the Ouija board. You open up the Ouija board to many, many things in the world. To the spirits in the world, to whatever is going to come through the portal of the Ouija board. And that's the Ouija board. Uh, you may have seen it on... Uh, some websites of what a Ouija board really is. Um, they come in many forms and shapes and sizes. But the, prim- uh, the premise of a Ouija board is all the same. Uh, do I recommend it for a lot of people? I would not recommend it to anybody. Um, to the simple fact that people use these things and have bad results after. Uh, so remember, Ouija board is just like open and closed door. It's like, a, it's like a door to a house, to a building. It's the same theory. Same theory applies to the Ouija board. Once you open up the a portal, uh, you got to close it sometime. Uh, there's ways of closing the Ouija board out. Um, there's ways. There's methods to go, or there's different easy ways of uh, closing up the Ouija board. Uh, people have done it many ways of cl- closing up the Ouija board. They do have... On the Ouija board, they say, it says night and day, yes or no answers there. They'll give you like 1 to 10, or they'll give you like A to Z. So you ask ask the Ouija board some questions. Any spirits that are going to come through will come through. Um, and it'll be like a portal. It's, the word I use is portal or a gate. They call it the gate of hell. No, it's not the gate of hell. It's called the gate of uh, the universe. The gate of the universe. 
And CERN, what a lot of people talk about, is like, sort of like that in a way. They want to open a portal to CERN. CERN is in Maryland, Switzerland. That's where CERN is. And no, they're not creating, uh, they're op trying to open up portals to the universe. Um, that's what CERN is trying to do, it's trying to accomplish. CERN is trying to open portals to this world of ours. And they do it through um, atoms. Remember, if you took science, the, they call it dark matter or antimatters. Um, and that's what CERN is trying to do. They're open portals. But they have shut it down due to the coronavirus. And everything is shut down. CERN is shut down. They won't be doing very much at CERN. That's in Maryland, Switzerland. That's in Switzerland, if you want to know. Um, that's where the place is. You might see a big, big sign saying CERN. This is the place where it says, even even with the logo, it says 666. So you can, you know right away, it's kind of, you know, it's just in the logo of itself. Um, folks, it's just no laughing matter. And like I said, just be careful. Um, I've heard about the CERN place for quite a while. Um, but there's an app out there for that. Um, you can research it, and they have a monument there at that uh, location, uh, CERN, called uh, Sheba, which a lot of people don't know. There's a, it's like a big, huge wheel, and Sheba is right in the, middle, in the middle of that wheel. Sheba. It's called the Sheba. Um, they subscribe this, uh, they call this lady, who, well, it's not really a lady, but... It's, I think it's called call it a serpent or something, I don't know. Anyway, in the middle of that circle, it's like uh, Sheba. Sheba's kind of like a, uh, if you do your history, you'll know what that means. Um, but that's where CERN is, a big, huge, uh, we call it mural, right in front of the area, somewhere in that uh, location. Uh, big, huge, you can actually type it up on YouTube, on uh, websites, and CERN, uh, if you've ever, ever been there, there's a mural somewhere in that facility, uh, mural in Switzerland. And uh, Sheba, which is the big, it'll, it'll show a plaque saying what it is all about. Um, uh, this guy on YouTube, uh, a while back, like three or four years ago, did a video. And he, he, he didn't know at the time that outside of the area, they were doing a sacrifice. I don't know what kind of sacrifice that was all about, but it was a little creepy and scary at the same time. Um, but yeah, they were doing a sacrifice. This was at CERN somewhere, uh, near CERN. Uh, this was a guy had apparently had a camera at the time, filmed it, what they were doing outside the CERN area of the building. Um, and they were doing a sacrifice, a big sacrifice. It's kind of crazy. People don't normally do these sacrifices. Um, if you look it up, you know what sacrifice means. Uh, if you look at that uh, terminology, go look at the definition of that. Mean. And that's what they're doing with humans to this day and age. They're sacrificing humans. And um, they do it in weird ways, in strange ways. It's, it sounds, uh, to see it, it's kind of barbaric. It's really hideous. Uh, the, the hideous of being uh, sacrificed is very hideous. But anyway. I digress. But, like I said, we don't sacrifice our humans, uh, our fellow humans on the planet. We only pass away when we need to. And if we uh, pass away due to uh, illness, we pass away due to illness. Um, and we all pray for these people. We all pray for them in a good way, not a bad way. We pray for these people in a good way. Like God, Jesus, our Lord and Savior, wants us to. And... Uh, you hear music in the background, you hear gospel music in the background. At some church doing gospel music. Uh, it's not rock and roll, it's just gospel music. If you if you got if you used to hearing gospel music all the time, then go to this church. I highly recommend it. Yes, exactly. I highly recommend this. And uh, it's the power of prayer. Power of prayer, power of God, the Lord and Jesus. Jesus, I will be saved. I will be saved in this world. I guarantee you I will. No question about it. When I pass away, I'll have somebody, somebody out there looking after me in the afterlife. And there'll be angels waiting for me in the heavens with wings. They have wings. Humans don't have wings. 
artificial worlds. And these angels, who I've dreamed about uh, in my history, angels will be up in the sky waiting for my arrival in the heavens. Uh, we'll be having big, pure gates, and we'll be white. We'll all be white, and we all have a choir. Angels are like a choir. It's like going to church and seeing a choir. It's like that way, but with angels up in the sky. And uh, go look it up on YouTube. There are some angels are singing up in the clouds, up in the, the heavens above, singing. He's a, it's like a choir, big, huge choir, and angels are singing. It, they don't need instruments, drums, or a musical keyboard. They don't need any of that stuff. All they need is a group of them singing. And it's very beautiful. Uh, I call it very uh, therapeutic. Because when they sing uh, in an in a angel sort of way, it's therapeutic. If you're not used to hearing this, this is very beautiful. When I first heard it, I was blown away how beautiful it was. Um, it was just beautiful. It was just angels. There was no instruments. There was just angels. It's like a big, huge choir. There was like a circle around them. And angels are singing. And they have wings, beautiful wings. These were natural wings. But angels have. This is what I had envisioned. And they don't have instruments what you hear in the background. Um, they has a choir. And it's like um, the, the instrument they use, uh, sometimes they'll use, is a harmonica or a violin. But you'll hear it in the sky. But don't worry, you'll hear it in the sky. Why am I telling you this is angels are real. Angels are real. They come down from from the heavens, come down for our fellow humans, and help them out. Just gotta need to pray, gotta need to pray, like everybody would say. And take the word of God, speak in the word of God. And it will shine a light on you. It will shine a light on you. Oh well, anyway. Good night, everybody. Thank you very much for this lovely conversation for me. I hope you, hope you enjoyed this. hope you learned something here. And until the next chapter, next um, podcast, hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you all on the next podcast of my Dave show. I go by the name of Dave show. You're going to love it. You're going to like it. And it's good audio. It's not uh, terrible audio. It's good audio. And I made sure of that. I put EQs on it. Um, Make it sound like a professional voice. Um, like if you're singing on a rock band. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's why I make it. Uh, it's all about the EQing. And you can go as deep as you want with your voice or you go as high as high. Yeah. And we'll do it through the EQs sound. So you can go as deep in the voice or you can go as high as the high on your voice. So I want to give you a pointers on uh, EQ in, in mixers or mixing consoles. Uh, EQ is most important to any any instrument, any drums, any uh, singing involved. The EQ. Most importantly on mixers, if you've seen mixers before, they have a limiters. They have limiters, and um, it's a channel strip. They call it channel stripping. Um, each channel, each input. Is a different uh, from the way the inputs are, way, where the inputs are, to all the way down to the faders. And you can uh, that one channel. If you put like one microphone channel there, you can pan it, pan it left, hard right, or hard left, or centered. Centered means it's going to be a sounding mono. Like it'll be sound stereo, but it'll sound mono. It's not very stereoish, um, and that's that's the way. When you hook them up to equipment, sort of like a mixing console, uh, um, Prius, I think it was Prius or something, um, these mixers, they, uh, big large companies that bring out these mixing consoles, um, uh, they're big brand names, big brand names out there. Uh, they do many things for many, many recording studios. Um, you can pan the microphones, you can do EQ in on them, you can uh, have gain levels, you can gain up the microphone, or you can lower down the microphone volume. Uh, it's really up to the user. And you can, uh, if you want more EQ in, like EQ stands for 
uh, if you want a, like a teeny sound on your voice or to a big thumping sound on, on your voice. Big, how do you say, bass sound on your voice. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's a, it, it's a wide range of the, of the uh, EQing. Uh, you can have a teeny sound, sounds like you're a, you know, a jazz singer to uh, all sorts of, that's what the EQ is meant for. Make it sound really good. So as the listener and the viewer can hear it, and the people that are there. So that's the EQing. You can't have a mixer without an EQing. Um, it'll just sound flat. It'll sound very flat, and you won't like it. Uh, uh, they'll, they'll mention it in res uh, sound recordings. And they say it sounds flat. It has not got any EQing. A uh, limiter is just, it limits the uh, inputs. And so bear that in mind. Anyway. I told you a lot. I told you more information that you need to know. Um, just remember, if you're buying a mixing console, bear that in mind. There's a lot of functionalities on, on mixing consoles. A lot of functionalities. And uh, it can be very scary at first, but just be well aware of that. And yeah, you'll get used to it. After a while, you get used to it. You just remember just remember EQ in it and gain levels. That's all you need to know. If you, if you put the microphone in an uh, input level, and hear the game. Make sure you have the game down low before you turn it up. Yeah, it's called tweaking. I call it in the um, in the equipment age. I so, it's always about tweaking it. They call it tweaking it until you get that sweet spot in your headphones to your s speakers out there. So I'm gonna have a revelation. This guy says a revelation. I'm gonna have a revelation here with you people out there. God is in, in the works. He's going to be coming back to this earth. There's a second coming about to come. Jesus, the Lord and Savior, our Lord, and um, he'll come back. And he needs to believe in you, and everybody believes in them. Just remember, God, angels are real. Heaven and hell are also real. Um, hell is kind of like you're screaming in um, blue murder. Um, that's where hell is. Heaven is where it's heavenly. They call it heavenly. Uh, that's the that's the expression that people get. Heavenly. Uh, so that's what you'll see when you go to heaven. It's heavenly. It's beautiful. Angels are right in front of you. God and Jesus is there. Uh, right in, waiting for you at the pearly gates. And that's what you'll see when you pass away. And that's what everybody is shown as the message. Jesus Christ gives us messages in our world to tell everybody that Jesus is coming back. We're all messengers. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, gives us messages through through uh, through, um, through practically um, gives us messages, and we we want to tell people out on YouTube. We use an outlet called YouTube, or or we tell on social media about a lot of people tell them that Lord is coming back, that our Lord and Savior is coming back on this earth to replenish the world. And uh, uh, Corinthians, as they would say in the Bible, that's what I'm, I'm geared to. Uh, uh, Corinthians, you go to that page, they'll tell you that. And we all need help in the world. Um, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is here to save us. And uh, no question about it. I speak Speak for the third person or the third party. Um, uh, so that's what I speak of. Uh, I'm kind of like the third person in this whole thing. And uh, Jesus, Jesus is real. Angels are real. The pearly gates are real. Hell is real. Hell is real. I'll give you a, a description of what hell is all about. Hell is like when people are screaming blue murder out there. Like you're raising your voice, you're screaming. That's what hell is. It's like going through... Uh, Lava. It's like going through hot lava. That's like hell. <laughs> you don't want to. You don't want to go where that is. Um, so a lot of people want to. That's why they're praying today. That's why. That's why people are praying today because they don't. They want to go to heaven, be saved, and not go to hell. I believe in that. And there is an afterlife. There is an afterlife. Trust me, if you want to say this, there's an afterlife. And the reborn thing. Everybody's uh, alluding to. There's a few people saying, oh, this reborn thing. 
A reborn again. What's the right terminology? A reborn again or a re reborn again? And uh, yeah, there's always a rebirth of everything. And um, we don't know what we will become after we leave this world. We pass away and we go in these caskets and we're buried six feet underground and that's it. That's an story kind of thing. They move on to a different uh, realm in the world and yeah. It's just their soul, their soul of their body, inside their body they have a soul. That soul lives on. Believe this when I'm saying this to you guys. Soul has, wants to live on. As the old saying goes, soul will live on. That soul will live on. But your body you see in front of you dies on, uh, just, it rests underground. But your soul lives on. It kind of lifts up from the body and lives on. It wants to live on. And that's where all these spirits and uh, are, you see, very a full apparition. I mean full apparition. Uh, these are people with full apparition where you just see their body, their figure body. And, yeah, it's just, it's like a poetry guys or a paranormal investigation. And, and we're just gazing. We're just gazing at the Lord and Savior. And uh, I'm just having a, a wonderful time in my life. And I'm really, truly one. I want to take this journey with you guys in, in my world. Whatever this journey is going to be. I'm not perfect. I'm not saying I'm perfect. But I want to take this journey with you. No matter if it's through YouTube, through social media. I want to take this journey along with you guys. I want to believe the, high, the highest power. The tenfold power. I just want... I believe, I believe there's an afterlife. And I believe there's a heaven and hell. I do believe there's aliens among us. And I, I kid you not, there's aliens out there. And there's a lot of things out there that can scare the living days out, out of a lot of people. Um, there's Bigfoot. If you heard a creature called Bigfoot um, that lives in the woods. Uh, and uh, there's aliens that come around in our worlds. Uh, they're kind of like, uh, they're like the eighth dimension or the fourth dimension. It's not the third dimension. It's the fourth, fifth dimension. Um, but yeah, there is a fourth dimension. Don't, don't get me wrong. The fourth dimension. Believe what I have to say to you folks. And the strong will survive. The strong will survive and the weak will die off. And you know, it's not uh, who wins or lose, who has money, who doesn't have money. It matters what who you are as a person. If you're living, you not die. If you're living, if you're living for this world, I pray for you. I really do in a good way, not a bad way. We all need a little prayer. Um, if you want a little prayer, come and ask us. We'll give you a little prayer. That's all you need to do. Just all you need to do is ask us if you want a little prayer. And we'll give it to you. No problem. Yeah. And uh, my friend always likes to do a victory speech. And that's th that's the thanks we give. The victory speech. Uh <laughs> Uh, I always, I always, I always, uh, I always chuckle about this because my friend always likes to do his victory speech that he always appreciates, and I, I do appreciate that. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not Henry, not my friend. Um, I want to go a different direction in my life. I'm trying to lift my life up to a fullest. I want to live life to the fullest. I know you people out there trying to figure out life what life is all about. Is God going to be coming back? Jesus going to come back? We don't know. Uh, is the resurrection going to come back? Maybe. Um, you just have to... Uh, how about the Bible Code? There's such thing as the Bible Code. Uh, there's a book out there called the Bible Code. Uh, that, it, these are events that uh, that uh, Bible has predicted these events happen in the world. And the church, church will believe in you. You don't have to go to a church to believe in God. You have to do it at home. <laughs> and believe in the church, believe in me, and believe in everybody else. Um, I believe that who who believes in that higher power, that higher archie, um, and believe in your church, believe in your fellow man, believe in your people out there, be grateful what you have in this world, and you'll be a good person. Just be so happy, have a smile on your face. I know I always see people smiling in their face because I, I sense that from my eyes. Um, 
And I really do. Um, they always have a smile on their face, and I really appreciate that. It means a lot to me. It really does. And every, every uh, there was always an expression called, keep a smile away. And it's like, always have a smile every day. Whatever the case may be, have a smile on your face. It's like, you know, your civic and other, maybe. Um, and sort of like that, you know. You both will smile at each other. And uh, it brings it brings uh, positive uh, positive how do you say it uh, positive reactions to other everybody around them. Uh, and uh, yeah, for a couple like that, I always see couples getting married and divorcing. I don't like the divorce, no question about it. Uh, but getting married is beautiful for a couple. I really mean I really mean that for a lot of people. Getting married and be married is beautiful. Um, you know, with your with your significant other, it doesn't. Um, I call it. I call it. It makes you better as a person, not worse as a person. Uh, and it makes you stronger. Makes you the family structure stronger. Um, and, uh, you know, when when we when another person falls from grace, we all pick ourselves up. The old say. We you know try to uh, humor them. We try and. You know, just give them thanks to what you believe in. Just, you know, just imagine yourself being a friend to someone. You know, like you really, really want to be a friend to that someone, somebody or somehow or some way. And, um, yeah, God will always be there for you. God will give you the word of God and he'll send a message to all our people around the world, our fellow humans, and believe what you believe in. I speak the word of God because I know, and you guys will know too. And um, we have in this world, we all have our material—they call it material. Um, we call it uh, baggage. Um, we all have our material stuff. We all have carry around with iPhones, selfies. I get it. We all people will carry around our iPhones, selfies, videos, but we're not in the word of God. I, I just feel I just feel so sad for those people. We don't we tend not to believe in God because we don't know if He's there or not. Um, God will always be there if you do the ultimate prayer. God will definitely be there, and uh, you don't have to go to church to pray. You can do it right at home and with your own times. Um, and just believe the ultimate prayer. You can you can get anywhere in this world. And always believe in yourself. Believe in the um, positive attitude, positive feeling, and that uh, that um, motivation. You gotta have motivation in your life. I have a lot of motivation sometimes. I, I might not show it to you people, but I do have motivation. Because if I don't, I'm gonna fail. Simple as that. I'm gonna fail miserably. People have noticed that on me. So I need to lift up my spirits, lift up my aura, as they call it, the aura word. Um, and give you the best, my my best self of my own, best as I can be. You know, I don't fall short from anybody. I try not to, because if I do, I fall in a trap. And the people say we're well, falling in a trap. It's not good. Uh, you got to believe in the God. You, you got to believe in whatever you believe in is fine by me. But believe, uh, uh, hear me in. Hear me in what I got to say. Believe in the God that you believe in. Don't don't believe what. The people are telling you out there, believe in your own God. And uh, God will do the rest. <laughs> it really does. It really does. Uh, God will do the rest. And, uh, yeah, he'll heal you. He'll bring you back to wellness. And uh, he'll give you food. He'll give you whatever you need in this world. Uh, if you're, you know, about to, uh, you know, about to die or something, God will be there. He'll send his angels down and to help you. And it'll be a beautiful moment to everybody. And, uh, yeah, it's just like a beautiful moment. You know, it's not like a selfie moment. It's a beautiful moment. It's like the awe factor. It's like uh, you have to believe it to see it. As I would say in videos sometimes, it's like believing and seeing it. It's like you need to see the full picture before you, you know. Or other than that, when people make a speech or, or uh, talking to you, just let them say something after, and then you can talk right after. Because uh, you gotta, you gotta let them say something. Because you just, you just know right away they're gonna say something really good, really good. So let them finish talking, and then you can talk after. And that's what I'm gonna say to you people on this podcast. 
let the other person talk first, and then you can start up from after they finish talking. Then, then we can really, really talk about the topics. The debates, we will talk about the debates. Uh, God is real or not? Are you atheists? The, uh, there is, used to be a, uh, a Google Hangout called Atheists. This is people who don't believe in God, Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. They're atheists. The word they use is atheists. Um, these are people that don't believe in God. They're just total opposite of what uh, pe church people do. Um, and they're, uh, I don't want to say they're hypocritical, but they like to be what they want to be. They're the total opposite. The atheist is kind of like the total opposite of what you believe in God. Um, and I know, I know I'm saying it wrong, but there used to be a Google Hangout. A topic was uh, talked about about atheists. Uh, people who believe in the total opposite of God, um, and that's belief. That's all. You, that's in your belief system. If you believe in that, that's great. I just want to say to you, people, I'm glad you guys are appreciating my podcast. I'm going as long as I can on this video, and um, I'm just very, very, very thankful that that I'm really here for you. And it's not all because of my friend who passed away two years ago. It's because I want to move on to my life. I don't want to bear the brunt of my friend passing away. I know he's gone, but I can't do anything about it. Um, uh, we all pray. We did our prayer in 2018 for him. But now we need to move on with our own lives. Uh, it's an easy question I can put out there. Um, we need to move on with our own lives. Jesus will help us lead the way. And uh, he'll give us a message for every human being on this planet. It doesn't matter if you're a child or children. Uh, doesn't matter if you're a man or woman. Doesn't matter if you and I are still alive. We're all here for a purpose. We're all here for a purpose. I want to say this to everybody out there. We're all here for a purpose. And that purpose in this world to do many things, to do multiple things. <laughs> you know, uh, there used to be a word a long time ago called multitasking. Uh, we like to do multitasking. As humans, we like to do multitasking. Um, and that's beautiful. We can do many things. We can do many things. That's why we have hands, feet, mouth to talk to, ears to hear. Um, we're good at that as human beings. We're not, not something that we aren't. You know, as I always like to say to people. Uh, we're not robots. We're not, uh, robots don't have feelings. Robots are not like us. We're not, we don't have feelings. We don't have sadness. We don't, are angry. We're pissed off. We're mad. We're sad, happy, excited. You know, all those emotions we go through as humans. And, um, yeah, a lot of feelings, a lot of feelings. I call the feelings reactions and uh, excitements. Uh, the excitements, it's like a moment. They call it the moments. The beautiful moments. It's like etched in time, the moments that people share as fellow humans. A beautiful moment. Just, uh, just, it's like a sigh of relief. It's a beautiful moment. Wow. It just takes your breath away. It really does. There's a song about that. Somebody sang it. It's referencing a song called uh, Take My Breath Away. I think it's uh, Kate Bush or somebody. Um, but like I said, there's a lot of people out there that really, really down in the dumps. There's Tense City. There's people who are, are really, really have a hard, hard time in this world. They shut down the cities. Not only that, they shut down the world. That really, really exacerbates everything in the world. Uh, people didn't have jobs. There was two, there was a lot of jobs around that were lost due to the uh, pandemic. Um, and it's not because of anybody's fault or anything. It's not laying blame on Donald Trump or Justin Trudeau. Um, it's just the way the virus was really... I would say to people, a lot of people, I would say, just blame the virus. Just blame the virus. Say, virus, I don't want you in this world. I blame you on this. Blame the whole country on this. And that's what I'm, I'm going to say to you people out there. It's all because of the virus. It's not because uh, of one individual. It's the virus. Just blame it on the virus. Make a song about it. <laughs> uh, just make a song about the virus. Like coronavirus. And just the way it sounds. It, make, a, make a song that you would pick out that would sound great. Do a song about coronavirus. Blame it on coronavirus. Do it like a Neil Vanilli song. Uh, like, instead of blame on the rain, blame it on coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> All right, girl, you know it's true. Remember that song? 
Well, there you go. We're not talking blaming on anything. But like I said, folks, here what I'm going to say. I'm going to let you guys uh, really, for my final thoughts, I would say my final thoughts would be, let God do everything in the world. That's my final thought. Let God do everything you can. You are the best person ever that you want to be. You're, you're thinkers. You're doers. You're, uh, you're ex you want to do exploring. <laughs> exploring. Who doesn't, right? Um, urban exploring. There's a lot of things people can do. It's not always the cops. It's not always the police people. It's not always this or that. Um, the other day I was watching a video on YouTube called The Hobo. This guy's a hobo. Um, he does, he, uh, now, his videos, he does it completely different to everybody else. He does scenery. He, do, he takes a camera and uses it as camera for scenery. He you know, goes around filming the scenery. It's like a background uh, scenery. Um, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's rarely seen on camera. I kid you not, folks. It's rarely seen on just a, a beautiful background. You know, it's like he was in Alaska. This guy was in Alaska, of all things. Um, and Alaska has hills. They have big hills, big flipping hills. Uh, I mean, the scenery, you can, it's like beautiful. It's like a camera, you know, as they say. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful scenery. I always, I always try and compliment that because uh, being a scenery has never been seen on cameras before. Uh, unless you have, you know, books or anything like that to see scenery. That's what cameras are meant to be, to do, to see scenery. You know, it's not always, it's not always uh, the things that people are doing nowadays, filming anything and everything. It's also about scenery. Go out in Alaska or Yukon, see the beautiful Alps, take a camera, do some videos, some uh, photography. They call it, in quotation, photography. Uh, if, if they can, or filming, whatever. And do talk, and do, you know, uh, backgrounds, background stuff. It's beautiful. I always compliment on this guy's videos because it's beautiful. They really see scenery that beautiful on video. I mean, it's. I was saying earlier today that uh, you really get these kind of videos nowadays. You know, it's always, it's always, uh, it's always haunted locations. It's always the you know police people. Don't get me wrong, that's all good, but uh, we need to see some scenery. we got to have that mixture in the videos. And uh, you can see a lot of videos on YouTube that are really good. And the scenery that this guy takes is beautiful. It's breathtaking. It's almost, the word I use is breathtaking. And it really is. So, folks, when you, ha when you can buy any, t it doesn't matter what kind of camera you have, big or small, um, just take video, take video, because you never know. We have a world, big world of ours, it has probably never seen the light of day on cameras. You know, I would say, if I was doing a percentage, I would say 60% of this world never been filmed. Never. Ever been filmed. So, bear that in mind. So, do, do a, lot, a lot of people a favor. Go out there and take a, a you know, an urban exploring trip. And do that. See the world. See the way it's the way it's beautiful. There's a lot of beauty out there. It's not because of us as humans. It's other things out there. You know, God wants to see us everything. God wants to see us every. Uh, God wants us to see everything in the world. You know, the way it's presented. Uh, it's uh, you know, video. Uh, it's the way it's presented. You know, in video and photography. So, yeah, so go out there and film a lot of things. You'd be surprised at what you find, what you, uh, not really find, but show on camera. The beauty of it. Doesn't, it doesn't have to be a fellow humans. It could be, um, it could be background scenes. It could be, uh, just, you know, photography. Landscapes, could be landscapes, videos. Um, it's just so beautiful. So, I'm, I'm on a topic. And the Lord is guiding me. The Lord, the Lord and Savior is guiding me to do all these videos. I want to thank you guys for, and uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. You know what the deal is on YouTube. Uh, if you want to leave a comment after this after this podcast, you can. Um, I'm letting you guys do that, but I'm going to stress this. I'm going to give you a caution here. Um, please do not swear on my comment sections. I will not let you guys comment on the swear words. Um, 
But other than that, I'm going to let you guys go now. I took a very long time to do this. And uh, you're just hearing gospel music in the background. This is a lovely one. I'm doing a podcast in the background. And, uh, yeah, it's beautiful music. When I first heard uh, uh, Angels in the Sky, I thought it was very therapeutic at first. Um, it was just beautiful. They had no instruments. Mind you, this was just angels. And uh, there was a harp. Yeah, they called it a harp. It was like a beautiful harp. If you ever heard of a harp, uh, it's an instrument in a way. A beautiful harp playing in the background. Uh, it's sort of like that with angels around them. And uh, yeah, it sounds beautiful. That's the only instrument they use, a harp. And you can hear it with the angels singing in the background in the heavens. And uh, yeah, take a moment and really, really, it's just, uh, I, uh, my words, uh, if you hear it, if you, I heard it first, uh, the first time I heard it, I was, it was sounded very therapeutic. It was very beautiful. I don't know, you should guys should listen to it. It's just, if you take that moment and listen to it, you'll, you'll know that it's very therapeutic. You never heard this kind of music before. Um, but yeah, our eyes, our ears, our eye eyes are always a beautiful thing. Uh, we have ears to hear, eyes to see, feet and hands to do what we need to do to get around this world and uh, live out our lives. Just live out our lives the best we can. 100%. And um, yeah, I appreciate you guys listening out there. Take heed what I said. And um, just live the life to the fullest. And uh, let God do the rest. God will guide you in every direction of life that you have. When you're born to when you pass away. And uh, that goes for everybody in the world. When you're born, when you're first born to when you're passed away and you're a certain age. Um, you take that with you in the afterlife. You really do. What do you ever do in this world, this world now, We'll take it from the afterlife. And, uh, yeah, so your soul lives on. In the afterlife, we have uh, we have so-called apps to deal with. And these apps are about mainly because of our voices. We speak beyond the grave. They call it beyond the grave. Um, these are distant voices. You may think it's weird or so, but these are distant voices. These are people crying out from the heavens or in the uh, afterlife. And they want to be here by any technology out there, any technology that we have. And, uh, yeah, so I want to say thank you, guys. Take care. Appreciate every time. Oh, don't forget that Bono from U2 is good. He's a good singer, really good singer. I was seeing early tonight about his uh, performance in uh, New York, Brun uh, Bur uh, Brooklyn, New York. He did a concert in 2004. I thought it was beautiful, very beautiful. The band U2, um, Bono, the front guy singer, Bono. He's been around a long time. Uh, he's 60 years old at the moment. I kid you not, I looked him up on this age. Uh, and yeah, 60 years old. He's 60 years old. He's been around doing songs since the early 80s. I kid you not. And people like him. <laughs> people really like him. I, I like the footage I saw tonight of the 2004 in Brooklyn, New York, concert that the secret concert that they were talking about. Uh, it was a secret concert. Nobody knew where the concert was, but yeah, you two and its band, or Bono and its band, showed up. Edge, the guitarist, uh, Bono showed up. The drummer showed up. Um, they all showed up. They're all there. They haven't passed away or anything. He, uh, Bono, the guy, the front singer of you two. It's still around to this day. He's 60 years old. 6-0. He's 60 years old. Everybody loves him around the world. He gets he gets well known around the world. And for good right. For good right. He's 60 years old. Can you believe a guy like that is 60 years old? You wouldn't believe he was. Uh, but yeah, 60 years old. Still ticking. Still keep going. I really appreciate the guy. And uh, yeah. So we're listening to the background about Jesus stuff and gospel music. And uh, just the word of Jesus, the buzzwords in the song. Uh, so they're singing the, the gospel music of Jesus. That's the buzzwords in the song, the lyric song. Yeah. So you probably hear it quite a few times in the song. 
and we will live on. We'll live on as human beings as as we are today. And I just want to say to you guys, do what you do best out there. What you can, what you're capable of doing. If you can sing, go ahead and sing. If you want to play guitar, a little bit of guitar, go ahead. Your world's your oyster. Basically, your world out there is your oyster. Go out there and do what you have to do to make things happen. If you can be a drummer, that's great. If you can be a, a keyboardist, great, wonderful. We'll have you here. It's like a, it's like a volunteer basis in a way. You can join whatever you want or sing in a band that you already have. And uh, yeah. Now remember, remember, music today it hasn't been written. Remember that. So go out there, write some songs, and maybe people like that. Go write some songs. So put it down on paper. Lyrically, because remember, you're going to be a singer-songwriter. You're going to write the songs and sing it. And uh, that'll be your song. It'll be a signature song. They call it the signature song. That People would identify you as a singer or songwriter. Make it a good song. Make it a good song that everybody will appreciate. You know, really take appreciation of your song and your words. Because yeah, remember, you're attributing your voice to a song. Remember that, everybody. You're attributing your voice, your own voice, to a song. That's what you're trying to do. You put it on paper, you put lyrics, you put words to beautiful music that we haven't heard of before. Um, and that's what songs are like. Songs are like songs that haven't been written yet. And I really appreciate that for a lot of people. I really do. And I, I strongly recommend that if you want to ask me. Yeah, I strongly recommend that for anybody who wants to get into singing. Remember, you you become the singer-songwriter, so you you sing it and you write it. And a uh, song has been written. It's just original material. This is like this is like you saying original original material. The song that has been written yet, um, and you want to have a, it's like a singer to approval. This is your song, and that's it. No one can copyright. And uh, so anyway, I just want to say good night, everybody. See you guys on the next podcast. Until then, we appreciate what you do out there. I'll be listening in the background to gospel, this gospel music at a church 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This gospel hour. And, uh, and you, can join the, you can join the band. You can join. I want to get the band back together. I really want to do that. Like John Bellucci once said. I want to get the band back together. And this is what they did in gospel music. Uh, so this is essentially a band right now. It's like gospel band. And, and they got the band back together again, just like John Bellucci would say. Uh, in, the, in the film, The uh, Blues Brothers. So we'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. For, there'll be more after this, folks. Stay tuned.